Ladies and gentlemen, this is the NIU NGT. It's a fantastic little scooter. It does 50 miles an hour. It does about 50 or 60 miles on a full charge. And normally you'd plug it into the main supply in your house. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to connect it to a solar panel and get your energy for free. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the wonderful world of dubious engineering. Let's connect a solar panel. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the wonderful, ladies and gentlemen, fuck off seagull. I've had this thing a few years, it's done 2000 miles. It's got two big lithium ion batteries inside. My plan is to use solar power to recharge this scooter. Let me show you how it's done. Using the keys, we can open up the seat area and I shows you the battery and there's two batteries there's one here and there's one under here as well and these batteries have these monstrous connectors on them it's quite bright out today so I'm having a bit of fun with uh, with lighting but yeah this is the connector that uh, that goes to both batteries and um, what's interesting about this connector is it has three small pins on it and it has two large pins on it. Obviously the two large pins are carrying the power, the main power, and then the three small pins. I didn't really understand if those three small pins were balanced charge pins or if they were some kind of communication pins. Anyway, let me show you the mains charger for this. So the mains charger for this unit is an absolute beast. It's got a big fan in the top of it. Um, it's got an IEC mains cable on the back of it there. Um, and it's got that same connector. Uh, and this charger draws about one and a half kilowatts, something like that, when things are on charge. Now that one and a half kilowatts charges the two batteries on this motorbike in about four hours. I never really need to fully charge my batteries in four hours. Um, and, and drawing that much current, well, I don't know, it just doesn't feel like it's nice to the batteries. I'm sure it must be fine. As I say, I've had this bike a number of years now. It's done 2,000 miles. So the battery on this device is 60 volts at 35 amp hours. So that's a pretty good sized battery. It's basically, it's very similar to the size of a car battery. So, so yeah, it's quite a beast that. So the solar panel that we've got is one of these old 20, 24 volt solar panels that was used for charging the leisure battery on an old VW camper van. And obviously 20 volts isn't gonna be able to charge this battery. We need to get up to between 60 and 70 volts. Ta-da, here it is. So basically this little module here takes is a DC to DC boost converter and it takes the 20 volts from that solar panel and it converts it to 65 70 volts so that we can charge this battery and it works let me show you what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you that this works so what we've got to do is we've got to connect the input of this unit we've got to connect the input of this module into the solar panel um, so I know that the brown wire that I've put on here is the Ouch, <laughs> is, the, uh, is, the positive, is the positive terminal. So I'm just gonna slide that cable in there. This is all the real bodge. It's just to sort of show proof of concept, really. Um, and this here is the negative. And hopefully with a bit of luck, you'll now see, whoopsie. <laughs> you'll now see, you'll now see that there's a red light on here uh, by the voltage regulator. And what we're gonna do is we're going to connect these cables here into the main charge ports on here and I've noted using a multimeter that this is positive and in fact I'm just going to double check all of this hang on I'll just get the multimeter out I don't want to get it wrong here I am with some multimeters um, what we're going to do is just have a quick look here at the voltage coming into the unit so if we look at the voltage coming into the unit we can see there uh, oh sorry that's the voltage coming out of the unit let's have a look at the voltage coming into the unit we can see there that there's 21 volts going into the unit and we could see uh, 70 something volts coming out of the unit and let's just double check the polarity of these connectors here so 50 volts DC and the positive is the closest one to you I know the positive on this is brown so the first one I'm gonna do is pop the brown in that hole there and then what I'm going to do is pop the yellow which is the negative should be black uh, in that hole there and then if you look here you can see the battery is now showing a state of charge and 
what I'll do now is I'm just going to put a current clamp meter in DC in DC mode and we'll have a quick look we'll see here that we've got four amps coming in from the solar panel and we've got half an amp at approximately 60 or 70 volts going into the charge of the battery. As you can see now, the lights are flashing on the battery to show that the battery is now charging. We've got full sun on the solar panel and our little DC to DC buck converter is doing exactly what it says on the tin. Proof of concept, works an absolute treat. There are three potentiometers on this unit, one here, one here, and one here. This potentiometer over here is to adjust your output voltage, and you probably want to make sure that your output voltage is probably around 65 volts, something like that. I think I've got mine set to 70, but set your output voltage to around 65 volts, just a little bit higher than the voltage of the battery, and the um, charge controller in the battery itself will manage when the battery is fully charged. This guy here, this potentiometer here, um, adjusts the uh, output current, so you can set a current limiter you want that wide open and then this one here is a voltage restrictor so ultimately if you're powering this unit from a battery and it sucks too much current out of the battery and the battery voltage is dropping off um, then this will protect the battery by ultimately switching this entire unit off so that's what that potentiometer is for there. Anyway, really cool piece of kit, and there's a couple of fuses on here as well, so you uh, uh, minimize the risk of causing any issues. It does get a little bit warm, um, so consider that, and consider where you're going to place this uh, in this project, assuming you're gonna do a project like this. I might actually put mine in an aluminum box, as I say, and pop it down in here and wire it directly with perhaps a switch on it into this connector here. So clearly the next thing I need to do is make some kind of more permanent connection into this connector here and run my own connector somewhere in the vehicle, perhaps even outside of the vehicle, so that we can just plug it into the shed whenever we need to. And in fact, I'm almost tempted to say this can live in the hole as well. Yeah, why not? Why don't we just have, why don't we just have a connector on the outside of this buck converter um, and have the buck converter and everything living inside the seat here. That's not a bad idea. And then we can go ahead and charge our NIU NGT happily every day, just pop it on charge and not have to worry about connecting it to the mains. And that ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, gives you free motoring. I mean, just free energy to ride your bike. Uh, fantastic. So if the screen's doing funky, weird things, it's, it's because the shutter speed of the camera is interfering with the refresh rate of the uh, LCD display. But ultimately, we're at 76% charge at the moment. So we're doing quite well. As always, folks, thanks ever so much for watching Dubious Engineering on YouTube. Another fantastic free transport top tip for you. Take care, have a wonderful week and weekend, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers and beers, folks. Bye for now.